Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. I'm gonna dive straight in today because I'm feeling a little bit ropey. And uh, I didn't think I'd get a video done today, but I've come in to work to complete a couple of jobs and it's led me onto a project which I think is absolutely worthwhile putting on camera and sharing with you. So that's what we're gonna do. As you can see in the background, here and then here, we've got boxes and boxes of bottles of vacant gesture and the stout that we made. And of course, what I want to do is put the labels on these bottles now. I've actually also got some of the samples over there. Let me just grab them. I can't help myself, can I? I'm always digressing, but yes, this has been poured for nearly an hour now, and look at that, it's still got a head on it. This is one of the sample bottles that we had from just last week's bottling, or the week before, we had a bottling exercise. That's the vacant, it smells fantastic. Mm, I'm not really in the mood for drinking now. The carbonation on that is on point. And then this here is the stout, which needs a little bit more time. But by heck, it still tastes fantastic. But obviously there's no head on that, so we need to work on that. Uh, but without digressing too much, we've got all these bottles that are gonna require labels applying to them. And although we started doing it manually, you can see on this example here that it isn't always easy to get the ends to line up. You see that? It's a little bit of a mismatch there. So I thought I'd revisit a project that I originally did on the 26th of September 2014 when we were starting Idle Valley Brewery. I've just watched the video actually and it's very cringe, but I suppose that's what making videos is sometimes about. And in that video, as well as talking about a load of other stuff, uh, I showed a couple of DIY beer bottle label applicators. So we're gonna revisit that project again because they're long gone, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what happened to them. And we're gonna make a couple more. So we can apply our beer bottle labels with a tug and a twist. You'll like that one, Tom, I know you're watching. But we can apply them with a tug and a twist and uh, it'll be lined up and hopefully a little bit quicker than, uh, than a hand job on its own, you know? Anyway, enough of the filthy talk. Let's get straight into uh, material selection, measurements, and hopefully a nice little time lapse of me putting together a prototype. So the last one that I made was from MDF and we've got a suitable sheet of MDF here and some off cuts that would probably be big enough just down there. I mean that that almost looks perfect, a perfect template for it. Uh, but really I'd like to make one out of plywood if I can. So maybe we do one of each today. I take a couple of these off cuts of MDF and we'll take this piece of ply, 18 mil, and see if we can't fashion something out of these. Right, I think we're gonna start this project with a sketch, as often many of my projects start. So we'll just zoom in onto this little piece of uh, paper here. And uh, I've got a bottle, and I've taken its vital statistics, if you will. So the width of the bottle along the base here, from one side to the other, the diameter, is 73 millimeters approximately. And I don't know if you can see this on this bottle, but uh, top and bottom, they kind of have the neck just dips in a little bit there and a little bit there, meaning that the diameter of the center of the bottle is about 69 millimeters. I've got these crude calipers here, which might give us a better indication. Yeah, well, we're about 71 there, but when we come to the end, we're about 73. So that, bit of play, tight, if you get what I mean. 
So what I want to do is make the labeler so that both of these lips on the bottle are sat on the edge of the timber. Otherwise what will happen is the circumference of the section which is wider than the circumference of the centre means that there will be a tendency when we rotate the bottle for it to want to wander around which in turn will mean that the label will be going on skew whiff on a little bit of a wonk. So we need to make sure that both edges of the applicator are the same. So let's start with a little sketch here. So we're going to want to have the labels held in a little cradle like so and then we'll probably descend down to the bottom like this where indeed we can do a little bit of work with some dowel to try and get the label to fold over and come off the backing tape and onto the label. So what we're going to do is have a slot along the front like so and uh, let's just square this off. Oh, it's kind of taking shape. So we'll have a dowel here about there and a dowel about there and then the labels will sit on a dowel that will run across here. So let's say the labels are like that. Then we want them to run off the roll around a dowel down here, up over this dowel and then back around this one and then out through a front slot that we can put in there. kind of makes sense to you, I'm sure it does. And this dowel here, when you pull the tape over it, the label itself should flick up because the tape is going to be being pulled back around the corner, so to speak. And that label will then flick up and you can just go whoosh, quick whip across with the finger, continue to rotate the bottle to apply the rest of the label and then pull it off and finish the job. We love pulling it off, don't we? So that's the plan. So we know that uh, we've got to sit a bottle in this section here, so I haven't really drawn that very well. So um, the bottom of this, let's start from this section here. This would possibly go like that, actually. And then up and to the label holder. So that would be a better shape. We know that this circumfer uh, this diameter here is going to be 73 millimetres at least. We want to leave enough space between the leading dowel here and this dowel here to accommodate a large roll of labels. The labels that I've got because I did a short run doesn't have a lot on, but I know some of the labels can be a good, let's say maybe uh, three inches deep with maybe a thousand labels on so if that's the case then we'll give from there to kind of there maybe 120 mil center to center actually it'll be a bit more than that it'll be probably yeah 120 130 should do it and then uh, we'll have to play it by ear what these dimensions are going to be but once we've cut a initial prototype out on the timber then at least we'll be able to report back to the camera you guys and tell you what those dimensions are so uh, let's sketch out something onto timber and let's get cutting the wood so to speed up the process what I've actually gone and done is made a initial prototype out of MDF and made sure that everything fits and is even. And then what we're going to do is just stick this on uh, on this piece of plywood like this. And then hopefully by just stacking them like that, we'll be able to cut two of them out 
with very little waste indeed and uh, yeah that bottom edge needs sorting out let me see if I can flip this around might be a bit straighter on the other end also a bit of flip. We'll flip horizontally and then hopefully we can optimize what we're cutting out of this piece of timber that feels a little bit closer so we'll have that there that there and then I'm just going to take my pencil and just uh, basically draw around them both and then what I did was I screwed them together when I cut them out so that all the holes and everything else is all in the same place. I'll just move that out of the way to get the edge of this nicely drawn on. There we go. And there we can see we've got one template drawn onto the ply. So for anybody wanting to make one of these, and it does seem to fit the bottles quite well, we'll obviously give it a test run when it's complete. We've got a total width here of 345 mil, total height of 190 mil. Um, the pipe that's going into this section here is a little bit of 42 mil plumber's pipe so that just goes kind of 60 mil in from the back edge and about 20 mil in from the top so it's it's going to retain that pipe when it goes in i do have a little piece that's cut somewhere i could probably show you what i mean there you go and then we've got two more dowels here to guide the label around like so so this label will go around there around the bottom dowel like so and then I've taken just an old steel ruler that I had from an old uh, square which I've lost the top section of the square so I cut the steel down and we're going to slot that in there and then our label will go over the steel rule back under the final dowel and then We've got this little piece here, which is 60 mil by 145. He sits on the front there, like that. And then we have a base on the bottom, like that. And the base, for anyone who's interested, is 360 by 145. All these dowels and bits of pipe are cut at 145 mil, as is the steel rule. This section here goes onto the top edge of the bottom frame, so we can pull the labels through the little gap that's made here. Hello? Fuck off. Right, so, uh, and then the top section, as you can see, will just slip on like this, and everything will kind of slip into the correct hole, and it'll all line up like that, and then you can see your label comes out at the end. So, they're the measurements. I think I've given you almost all of them. Hey, up. Apart from where these dowels are, so let's just give you those measurements now. So this bottom section where the label sits, that is cut out to the width of the label, which was 57 mil, I believe. Was it 57? No, it was a little bit more. 73. So that's 73 mil there. The steel rule is just a slot that goes in to the, to the point of this shape here. I'm knocking, knocking everything over, brilliant. So we've come round with this curve 
and then just as that curve comes round to this bottle, because we don't want the bottle to be captive of course, it wants to be able to slide in and out. So that's almost half of a bottle, that hole if you know what I mean. And then this line where the um, steel rule goes in, points to the bottom of this dowel here, to the underside. This bottom dowel is 170 from the back and about 35, 33 mil from the base. The second one is 250 mil from the back and about 25 from the base. This is the center of the holes. And then obviously the bottom goes uh, on as a full base plate, so it covers the end grain of these sides. I'm gonna cut the next piece out. I'm gonna assemble it all and then we're going to see it in action and hopefully in combination to all the dimensions that I've given you and a rough idea of this shape you wouldn't necessarily have to you know repeat that it could be any shape you wanted here really I've just done it to retain the labels nicely and the width of the whole shebang was dictated in fact by the width of my labels these are 95 wide, but fortunately I went through the whole pack and we've got some stout labels that are 105, so I've made sure the gap between the two halves is going to be 105 millimetres, and if there's any slack, you can just put a little bit of cardboard in there as a shim to take up the space. So that should be kind of self-explanatory. So let's get the rest of these sketched out and then we'll cut them out on the bandsaw. So I was just in the middle of assembling uh, the plywood version of this and as I pre-drilled a screw hole the timber decided to delaminate a little bit on me so I've put some glue in there, we've clamped it up and I'm just going to let this cure overnight before we come back to it. Fortunately the MDF version is up and running so let's go outside have a look at that and see how we feed bottles onto it and everything else and uh, apply some labels just see if she works i know she does so here's the machine i'd say complete definitely usable 
and uh, we're going to load her up with some labels. You do have to take the first few labels off the roll in order to get the whole thing threaded through. So we're going to go underneath the first roller. This is going to be tricky because my fingers are covered in MDF dust. Around the top of the blade and then we want to go under the second roller like so and out the front so let's just fold that back up again there we go so we're on so wherever the labels land on this section here is going to determine where they're going to be on the bottle of course what I would like to have done is uh, put a shim in here to take up that little bit of space but the stout labels actually have quite a lot more sort of gap just there um, a lot more backing paper so let's give it a whirl anyway I think maybe we want to be on that side oh, I'm not sure maybe that might stay on the bottom let's stay on the bottom and see how it works right zoom in for this right let's see if we can uh, apply a label that lines up pretty good I reckon on the back it's just catching that bottom lip so maybe we'll just have to push the this back stop away a little bit so we'll pull it forward and of course the trick is speed can you apply labels faster with the machine than by hand And it's certainly looking that way. So it seems to help more if you actually rotate the bottle rather than pull the, fill, uh, the backing paper out. So maybe, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. What would be handy is if all these were powered rollers. Uh, and you can buy a powered label applicator, semi-automatic they call them, but I think they retail for about 150 to 300 quid. And well, you've just seen me knock this one up in 40 minutes. So this is a good stopgap, in my opinion. Well, there we go. We're just coming up to. Uh, there's 12 bottles here, but three of them were already labelled. So, nine bottles. While I'm talking, looking at the camera, prattling around, I'm sure once that's set up and you're flying along with it, you'll be able to do a case of bottles in no time. And I think that's pretty acceptable where the label's landed could be just a little bit higher so I might just rejig this back section here a little bit and pull it out maybe three or four millimeters but I think that's gonna be fine right let's have another go I've gone and cut a couple of pieces of scrap this is just like a six mil ply and that will slot down either side and it'll stay there on its own hopefully to take up the slack so we'll just pop a box here and uh, move this a little bit so you can see what's going on so we're going to be out the box onto the bottle and into the box how's that I think that 
works just fine, quite frankly. Oh yeah. There's a little bit of movement, but it's like less than a millimetre over the whole circumference of the bottle. So I'm sure that once you get into the swing of things, then that little bit of margin of error, if you like, will work its way out because it tends to. When you get into a rhythm for something like this, you kind of know, you get a feel for it, you know? You can watch it, you can correct any minor little mistakes, like I'm figuring out straight away that if I pull in a direct straight line out of the base of the applicator with the label, then you can see that A, I don't have to flatten the edge on and B it keeps the whole uh, roll lined up so it is gonna go on straight so there to there there to there looking better all the time looking better all the time so again you'll see I don't have to rub that edge on and then by rotating the bottle What's actually happening is, as it touches there, I'm pulling that bottle and the whole friction in the system on the roll is kind of putting a little bit of pressure on the label and that's actually enough to cause it to stick down that edge. So there we go. I think that this is going to be a real time saving construction and or contraption and uh, well all the info for you to build one at home should be in the video I'm a big uh, believer that you know if you make your bottles look well presented then to me that means that whatever's in the bottle has had just as much care in terms of being put together as what's on the outside of the bottle so I do hate it when people send me some home brews and it's got the old label still on it like it'll say it's in a Marston's pedigree bottle with the old label on and it's just scribbled on I mean I know a lot of people are in a rush and home brewing can take a lot of time but if I'm going to send something to somebody else and I've done it in the past where I haven't actually had time to put a nice label on but you know if you do want to make an impression then I think you definitely have to uh, make first impressions count and while well, this a beer bottle label effectively is your shop window is it not when somebody first sees your product anyway that's just a few thoughts from me so that's a bottling machine kind of works we'll set up for a little bit of a thumbnail here in a minute and uh, some exciting news, although nothing's happening with it yet. I am seriously considering next year maybe looking into buying a can seamer and some cans. So if anyone knows anything about that or can point me in the direction of a relatively cheap one. Uh, the best one I've found in the UK at the minute is from Malt Miller. And then also there's a company in the States from whom he imports called... Uh, October or something like that October can seamers I'm not sure if you know anything about it. That would be really helpful for folks So let me know in the comments other than that. Thanks for tuning in. You know the drill You've still got time to vote for us in the description So get your vote up over to us Harrison's Brewery the Brew Shed Retford and Iron Tree Designs for the North Knots Business Awards If you like the video don't forget to like the video and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see what we're going to be doing on the next video here at the brewery and we will see you then cheers <laughs>